Welcome to another tutor short provided by the Educational Support Services Department of Lehigh Carbon Community College in Schnecksville, PA, just outside Allentown. These videos provide key learnings for English and other writing-based courses provided here at LTRI-C. Please remember that the Educational Support Services Department does provide walk-in tutoring five days a week. Online writing tutoring is also available through the college website. Today we're going to talk about integrating sources. This is going to be the first of a two-part video series on taking information and putting it into your paper to help prove your argument. Uh, in this case, for this video, we're going to talk about finding sources, uh, which can be anything that helps reinforce your argument. Uh, we're going to talk about evaluating those sources, saying whether or not they're good or strong or uh, in turn well argued. Um, and then in the next video, we're going to talk about taking those sources and integrating them into the paper itself and how we uh, smoothly use research from someone else in our own work. Let's start by talking about the different types of sources that you can look at and what their sort of relative value is. Um, all sources are not equal. Some sources are much stronger than others and more, uh, more useful for supporting your argument than others. Um, this comes from the fact that some of them are, in turn, more well-researched or more uh, subjected to more scrutiny than others. At the very top of this list is scholarly articles. Uh, this means that uh, this means articles that are in an academic journal of some sort, a peer-reviewed journal. That just means that uh, whatever the article writer's field is, other authors and other uh, specialists in that field have looked at the article and said, "Yes, we think that this." Uh, this particular paper and this particular argument is valid or has uh, strong research. That makes it pretty much the strongest type of source you can get. Uh, down the rungs here, uh, down to the next rung, we've got books. And this might come as a surprise, you know, books are traditionally held as this great source of knowledge. But the thing is, not all publishers are knowledgeable in all of the fields that they publish in. Uh, this is why we have sort of pop uh, history or pop science, uh, that people publish broad, popular uh, books on these subjects that are not necessarily the most well-researched. Uh, some publishers are, of course, quite trustworthy. Uh, if you look at academic publishers uh, from universities, a lot of that stuff is peer-reviewed, um, you know, like Oxford University Press, stuff like that. That's at sort of a higher level uh, and is probably trustworthy. At the lowest level, uh, you've got books that are uh, selling a treatment or selling a uh, particular procedure. Um, anyone trying to sell you something, probably not the most trustworthy of sources. Down the rung, rungs again here is news articles. Some journalists, like some publishers, are excellent. Some of them are very uh, in tune with the field in which they're reporting on, uh, have quite a bit of knowledge, and are making that uh, field more accessible to a broader audience. Um, investigative journalists worth uh, looking into and worth considering for a paper. A lot of more casual journalists or uh, beat journalists that are assigned to, say, science or academic subjects, they don't necessarily know uh, the field well enough to fully understand what they're reporting on. Um, nothing against them, it's just a simple fact that a lot of uh, journalists that are assigned to science papers uh, that don't have a background themselves in science aren't going to be able to understand uh, the full ramifications of particular research. It is much better to go to the original scholarly article again uh, than to rely on this second-hand reporting of scholarly articles. At the very lowest rung here, we've got web pages of different sorts. Web pages with uh, .info or .gov endings, uh, Wikipedia, and then and, and other sorts of uh, sources like that, and then at the very bottom, just general web pages and blogs. Um, 
I don't get confused here because we actually will be using a web database when we are searching for scholarly articles, but this is kind of a different thing. The web database will give us results um, from peer-reviewed articles from print publications. This is different than web pages that basically anyone can put up. They the web pages are basically at the absolute lowest rung of credibility. Um, same pretty much with Wikipedia. Uh, the fact of the matter is Wikipedia can be edited by anyone, so it's probably not the most trustworthy of sources. Uh, it can be sometimes good to look at Wikipedia and say, oh well, okay, I don't want to cite Wikipedia directly, but Wikipedia does cite other articles that I can look at, so I'm going to look up those articles and cite them instead. It's a good place for starting research, potentially, but I would not cite it in a page, uh, in a paper on its own. Um, a little bit more trustworthy is web pages like uh, with .info or .gov endings. That's, uh, well, info, obviously, and then uh, government. Um, that tends to have a bit more accurate reporting, but even then, I'd say weigh your options there and see if you can get a stronger source. Um, and sort of outside all of this is primary sources. Primary sources are uh, sort of direct first-hand accounts that relate to your topic. Uh, like, for example, if you're doing a sociological paper, primary sources would be uh, direct research that you do or direct uh, accounts from people that you've collected. Um, if you're doing literary research or historical research, you might use uh, letters or uh, memoirs, things like that. Uh, that's sort of outside of this stuff because that's the subject of your paper. Rather than uh, external analysis used to build up your argument, this is like the subject of your argument itself. Um, so it's not so much a question of credibility as it is that you're uh, studying that material and evaluating it uh, sort of individually. Now, before we begin, I want to talk a little bit about evaluating sources in an, a different way. Um, evaluating sources beyond just the material that you're working with, uh, beyond just what type of source it is, uh, involves seeing whether or not this source is going to be useful for your particular paper or your particular argument. That means looking and seeing, well, okay, first of all, do I have enough sources that I can make this argument? Do I have material that I can work from? Am I only coming up with a couple things? Or am I coming up with lots of different uh, papers that are going to reinforce my topic? Uh, and then second of all, once you have this whole list of sources, you look at each one individually and say, well, is this really going to be useful to me? Can I get a whole lot of material out of this article? Or is it pretty much restricted to just one or two paragraphs that I can maybe get a quote from? Um, if it's the latter, probably uh, you don't want to actually even bother using that source. Sometimes it's worth considering whether or not you should change your topic uh, to account for the fact that you're not finding much in the way of uh, source material. Uh, when I was first <laughs> drafting up this video, we were talking about uh, researching the band Pink Floyd and the topic of uh, neurosis or anxiety in Pink Floyd's music. Uh, it seemed like a fun kind of topic. Uh, and it seemed like the kind of thing that we'd have a lot of potential to find information on. But as I started searching, I realized that I was only coming up with one or two sources. There was one book source that was tangentially related to that idea and a couple articles. Um, but uh, as I went through and started researching, I kept coming across the name of the band Radiohead, so finally I just said, well, why don't I look up the band Radiohead and see if there's any information on this? There was a lot of information. So uh, midway through the first draft of this video, I said, let's look up Radiohead instead and talk about the same topic, this idea of anxiety in popular music, and... Uh, shift the focus from Pink Floyd to Radiohead. Um, that's the kind of thing that you can and probably should do uh, when you are doing a research paper because it allows you to account for the materials that you're finding. With that said, let's talk about our two types of source research um, 
that we're going to be focusing on in this video, uh, which is the two main things here, scholarly articles and books, are our highest level sources. Now, I've already called up our library's webpage here, ltrc.edu slash library. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, and I'm going to go over to books, media, and more. Uh, this is, uh, Encore is our database for this particular library. Um, and this is, most libraries, if you're going to a public library, for example, to find additional sources, uh, you should be able to find a similar kind of thing here, uh, where you can type in a keyword, uh, or an author, or a, uh, or something else, anything else. Uh, we have actually got, uh, actually I'm going to show you advanced search quick. We can go into the advanced search here and use uh, keywords, titles, subjects, and authors. That's pretty standard. Um, so I'm just putting this in as a keyword. We could also search something else. If we wanted to, we could search Radiohead and Anxiety. Um, but I'm not going to at the moment. So, already, just like I said, uh, I'm finding three different sources, and Ultra-IC is actually pretty great uh, in that we've got a lot of books that are available uh, where you don't even have to come up to campus if you're uh, on one of our satellite campuses. You don't even necessarily need to come on to our physical campus uh, here in Schnecksville uh, to look this up. You can access this by uh, going to click through to the title and then go down here to connect to the full text of this ebook online right down here at the bottom. Uh, so we're going to click that and what happens is it, this opens up um, the actual full text through this uh, info tools website thing. Um, and again, this is this is not a quote-unquote web page. This is a book that exists in print that you're just accessing online. It's an important difference. Um, so now we get to the stage. Here's my first source that I'm looking at. Uh, it looks like this book uh, in particular seems to explore two of their particular, or three of their particular albums, uh, OK Computer, Kid A, and Amnesiac. Um, and it looks like pretty in-depth analysis. Uh, like this, chapter three is, and I love this, uh, over on the side here, we can go directly from chapter to chapter. Uh, now, I'm not reading this entire thing, I'm just and I'm, I'm literally doing this live, this is the first time I've done, I've looked at this particular source, uh, I'm not reading this live, I'm just scanning this text for uh, different things that look promising. Like, I'm looking here and I hit on alienation as a reaction to the onslaught of technology. That sounds awful, actually, but that sounds really uh, related to my... Uh, topic, this sort of idea of uh, psychological distress expressed through their music. Um, not particularly pleasant to experience, but very relevant to my paper's to topic. Um, and it looks like they're doing some pretty detailed analysis here. Um, of the critical reception in particular, which is also potentially interesting for my, my paper. So uh, just at a glance here, um, and I might come back to this and decide later that no, it's not as good as I thought it was uh, as a source. Right now, I'm just going to note this down as something that could potentially be useful. I'm not gonna read it right now, but I'm gonna leave it open in this other tab here. Um, and come back to it later when I start really uh, researching my my paper materials in depth. Um, similarly, I can click through. Actually, you don't even need to click on the title to click through to the ebook. 
Um, I'm going to check out this Radiohead and Philosophy one. Oh, and that actually, uh, <laughs> apparently, uh, overwrote my previous tab. This was the tab that had the other book in, and now it's this book. So, uh, as you can see, the technology can be a little bit ridiculous at times. Um, <laughs> there it is, alienation in the onslaught of technology, uh, and frustration in attempts to make YouTube videos. But, uh, <laughs> it really is, despite, despite, uh, these periodic annoyances, uh, this is actually, um, a good system to work with. Uh, so, I'm looking at this book, and... Again, I'm going to flip straight to the contents, and wow, what a gold mine this is. Um, when you go to the contents page and you see a bunch of author names underneath each chapter title, what that means is that you've actually got a number of different essays all collected in one volume. This is an anthology of different critical essays analyzing one particular subject. That is the same as if you uh, found these in a journal, uh, in an academic journal. Uh, and often, uh, this sort of thing is going to be a peer-reviewed book with peer-reviewed articles within it. In fact, I'm going to check out, uh, actually, we have all the publication information down here, and uh, I don't I don't really know a whole lot about Open Court. Um, let's flip back here to this. Ah, and here we go, Volume Thirty Eight in the series Popular Culture and Philosophy. That's pretty promising because this means that this is a long-running series of uh, collections of critical essays uh, that again, suggests to me, even without uh, knowing and researching this directly, that suggests to me that probably this is peer-reviewed material and is probably strong material for a paper. The best part about this is that you don't actually have to cite the entire book as one book. You can cite every single one of these essays separately. Uh, so if you if you used all of them, which I don't recommend because I doubt that uh, they will all be relevant, but if you use all of them, let's flip to the end of the contents page here, and yeah, you could get 22 sources just in this book alone. Um, these kind of books are, like I said, a gold mine for this sort of uh, research that you're doing. If you can find big anthology books uh, with peer-reviewed research, remember that's always important. It's always got to be peer-reviewed. It's always got to be uh, of a high level of academic standard. Um, if you can find a book like this, uh, it saves you a ridiculous amount of time. Uh, and again, we have the uh, luxury of using this book uh, completely online. Um, and this you know, as I'm looking, looking through this, uh, Radiohead's existential politics um, sounds sounds deep, sounds kind of intimidating. But I know from uh, my background that existentialism, uh, anxiety, sort of plays a big role in that kind of stuff. So uh, let's note this down again, uh, and it, it's good to. Uh, I tend to have a piece of paper handy. Um, I mean, you could type this on the computer too if that's easier, but I tend to have a piece of paper handy and I write out um, just the basic information uh, manually. Like in this case, I'd write down Radiohead and Philosophy uh, Reich and uh, that would allow me to look this up later in case I lose the link or in case the web page gets overwritten like you just saw happen to me. Um, it's a good way of keeping track of uh, what sources you're using. So that's a good overview of our book sources. Now I want to talk about our uh, the databases that we subscribe to. So I'm going to go back to our library's web page um, and you can click start your research here, but really we're going to click through to something else anyway. So I'm going to go over, um, I'm going to go over to the 
Rothrock Library sidebar here. Uh, click Find Articles and More. Uh, and this bumps me to the entire selection of uh, journal databases that we subscribe to. Um, in this case, uh, and you can see that there's all sorts of different stuff here. Uh, everything from uh, EBSCO is always good. That's that's kind of a huge uh, that's kind of a huge database that has a lot of different types of journals. Uh, Eric is specifically on education. Um, uh, I mean, I know the ones that I'm most familiar with based on the fact that I have a, a, a literature and media person. Um, so I tend to look at uh, literature online, literature resource center. Uh, Oxford Art Online can be very useful. Uh, I actually am not familiar with pop culture universe, so that might be, uh, so as I'm reading through the list, it's always good to read through the list uh, each time you start again uh, with a new paper, because you might see something that you missed before that could be useful. Uh, Project Muse is great, and ProQuest uh, is often very useful. Um, I'm actually going to start with ProQuest here, and see what we get. Now, like I said, ProQuest is a an article database search system. Uh, that means that it's got a whole bunch of different articles uh, from different journals, and you're searching through these, uh, searching through this, it's like an index of uh, individual articles that exist within other print publications. So I'm going to start by I'm going to type in Radiohead. Um, I'm going to click scholarly journals here because remember we want, you know, academic sources if if possible. So let's see what we get. There's some interesting stuff in here. Radiohead and the Resistant Concept Album. That's kind of interesting. Um, uh, this is an article from Popular Music and Society. I'm just scanning these right now. Uh, again, this is... Uh, I'm not going to click through and read each one individually just yet. I'm just checking to see whether or not uh, there's any material here that might be promising. Um, so right at, at this moment, uh, I'm not entirely sure that any of these are going to be super useful to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to narrow down our search terms a little bit. Let's do Radiohead. Actually, let's go to let's go to Advanced, and I'm going to do Radiohead and anxiety or psych and now there's a few tricks that I'm going to be using here uh, first of all I've got a radio head here and anxiety now this and means that when I'm searching the database it's got to show me results that have both Radiohead and the word anxiety in the text. Uh, so and requires that both words be present. Uh, and also make sure that it's not searching, uh, like if I typed in Radiohead anxiety up here, it would give me uh, or at least many databases, I think ProCrest works this way, I know EBSCO works this way, uh, it would give me Radiohead Anxiety uh, as one big <laughs> chunk of text, so it would only search for things that have Radiohead Anxiety in that order in the article, which uh, narrows the search way too much, uh, and you're probably going to get zero results from that. So by putting and in between, it shows that we want these two words separately. Radiohead can be anywhere, anxiety can be anywhere, but they've both got to be present. 
Uh, or says that we want Radiohead and Anxiety or Psych something. Um, that means that even if it doesn't have the word anxiety, if it has a word like psychology uh, or psychological in here, uh, it will come up, it will show that result as well. Uh, so or is a good way of showing that, uh, you know, you can have, well, it's pretty intuitive, you can have either this or that, um, and they will show up in the article. There's one last trick I'm using here. Uh, I've got this asterisk at the very end of the word psych. Asterisks uh, in, a, in a lot of search engines allow you to cut off the end of the word, and psych will now return the results psychology or psychological or uh, psychotic. Uh, anything that begins with psych, psyche, anything that begins with psych will show up with this result. So rather than having to type in each one individually and go psychology or psychological or psychotherapy or so you can see how that would get really, really boring after a while. So this is a great way of just making sure that you're searching for all of these terms uh, in a big bunch. And now I suspect that uh, we didn't have enough search, uh, search results at the beginning here um, to really give us any results. Uh, actually, we're going to do, uh, this is anywhere except full text, which seems a little odd. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put anywhere. Um, so anywhere in the paper that these terms uh, show up, let's search. Oh, and actually, we do have 53 results. Uh, let uh, and it and in fact, it is uh, it still has scholarly journals um, selected. So I'm not going to go through the entire uh, list here and see whether or not. Uh, these particular things are going to work for me. But you can see it's got Radiohead. It has highlighted these search terms for us. Radiohead, anxiety. Psychological, psychology. Both of these terms are highlighted despite being different words because they both have that psych beginning. Uh, psychologists, psycho, all kinds of stuff is showing up here. Um, so this is how we uh, can narrow or broaden our search searches. Uh, we narrowed it from just Radiohead to requiring anxiety or psych, but then we broadened it again by uh, allowing any derivation of uh, psych as a term. That's pretty much the basics of searching. Um, there's not a whole lot more to cover. Uh, it's pretty much just a, it's almost more art than science. It's pretty much just plugging in different search terms and seeing what comes up. It's always worthwhile, uh, I think, to try a number of different ways of tackling the search engine uh, because there's always all kinds of interesting, exciting results that don't show up for one silly reason or another. Uh, the very last thing that I just want to show you quickly is uh, another database search that you can do uh, through Google. Uh, this doesn't show up on our... These are databases that we subscribe to, but we can also use... Uh, if you type in scholar.google.com This takes you to Google Scholar, which is just like these uh, databases that we subscribe to, this searches through uh, academic databases uh, for peer-reviewed materials. So, once more, we're going to do Radiohead and Psych and see what we get uh, just out of curiosity. Uh, looks like a whole lot of different stuff that isn't particularly relevant to us. Um, 
So we're going to add in anxiety. And this is what you do. You uh, add and remove based on the uh, relevance of what you're getting. Um, it looks like a lot of this stuff is uh, pretty tangentially related to Radiohead. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say searching here so far is a bust. You know, sometimes a particular database is not going to be useful. That's all right. Uh, but just essentially keep trying, keep searching, keep plugging different things in. Uh, evaluate whether or not your sources uh, have relevance to your paper. And uh, next time we'll talk about how you can start integrating those sources into the paper itself and how you can use these sources to support your argument.